السلام عليكم My name is Hamza Mansouri and I'm a member of Google's Developer Student Clubs Cyber Security Track at Imam Abdurrahman bin Faisal University and today I'll, I will be presenting this workshop which is all about brute force attack okay so let's move on to let's move on to our agenda so in this workshop we will be going over what is a brute force attack and then we're going to see the types of brute force attacks and then we're going to see uh, how to how a brute force attack works and how to perform a brute force attack using one of the tools in Kali Linux. Okay, and then we're gonna go on and see how can you as an individual uh, keep yourself safe and prevent brute force attacks from happening. Okay, so let's move on to what is a brute force attack. So basically a brute force attack is when someone or a hacker tries to gain access to your computer or your system or one of your social media accounts by entering different kinds of usernames until he gets it right. So the person's gonna keep trying different kinds of passwords until he gets it right. So a brute force attack is a hacking technique that employs trial and error to crack passwords, login credentialities, and gain illegal access to individuals, accounts and systems. So that's basically what a brute force attack is. Moving on, we're gonna see the types of brute force attacks. The first type is a simple brute force attack. This one is called simple because it doesn't require specific skills. It doesn't require a specific uh, software and anyone can perform this attack. So let's say for example, uh, you forgot your phone at the college campus and then someone else found it. But instead of like returning it, that person decided to try and get access to your phone. So what this person would do is manually enter one password at a time until he gets it right. Like he's not going to use any software. He's going to enter the passcode with his fingers. So for example, he will start with 0000, and then go on to 0001 and so on until he gets the right password. So that's the simple brute force attack. The second kind is a dictionary attack. This one requires a software or a tool. And the hacker also has like a, a long list or a dictionary of words. And he's going to use this tool and the tool is going to automatically enter one password or the combination of usernames and passwords until he finds the correct one. Okay, the third type is a hybrid brute force attack. This one is a combination of a simple brute force attack and a dictionary attack. And there's also many more uh, types, but these are the main three that I'm going to talk about. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. Uh, we're going to see some tools you can use to perform a brute force attack. Uh, so all of these are pre-installed on Kali Linux, so don't really need to, uh, to install them. The first one is John the Ripper, and then we've got Hydra. This is the one we're going to be demonstrating, and we have Aircrack NG and Metasploit. Okay. So how does a brute force attack work? So in order to, pro to perform a brute force attack, you need a list of words or a list of usernames or a word list, you need a word list. So I'm gonna show you guys how to create your own word list. Of course, you can use one of the word lists that are on the internet or that Kai Linux has like uh, the rocky.txt dictionary, but I'm gonna show you if you like know the victim and you want to and you want your brute force attack to be more accurate and more successful, you're gonna create your own word list. So I'm gonna to go to Kali Linux. Okay, so this is Kali Linux and, and I'm gonna to go to the desktop uh, directory. Uh, so first I'm gonna create a file. I'm gonna just create a random file. I'm gonna call it list dot text okay so this so this creates a file right here okay uh, the next thing i'm going to show you guys is the tool that we're going to use it's called crunch okay so what is crunch crunch can create a word list based on a criteria you specify so you're going to specify the criteria and crunch is going to generate a bunch of 
uh, words based on the criteria you enter. Okay, and then we're just gonna start. So how do you use crunch? First, you, you write crunch and then you specify the minimum and maximum length of the password. And then you add different kinds of criteria. Okay, so first, uh, let's say, uh, we're gonna say crunch and we're gonna put a minimum length of four and a maximum length of six. Um, you can make it as long as you want, but I'm just gonna keep it simple, okay? So now let's say, for example, we want to get access to this person's name and this person is, let's say, Alice. So we know that the person's name is Alice. And we also know that Alice is born in 1998, for example, I'm just putting random things. Okay, after that, we're gonna put a hyphen and an O and we're gonna specify the file we want it to be saved in, which is going to be this file right here, okay? So it's gonna be list.txt. I'm gonna hit enter and crunch will generate the word list for me, okay. So now it's complete and it's about uh, this much of lines. So that's a lot of lines, okay? Let's see, let's see our word list. Oh wait. Okay, so this is all the possible words or passwords that Crunch generated, okay? So that's how you make your uh, word list. Of course you can use, as I mentioned before, uh, the ones that are on Kai Linux or on the internet, like the Rocky.txt dictionary. Okay, so now let's go back to the slides. Uh, okay, so this is how a brute force attack, attack works. First, you're going to need a brute force tool, which is going to be Hydra. Then you're going to need a list of usernames and a list of passwords, just like, just like the one I just created, okay? And then Hydra is going to keep trying different combinations of usernames and password, and it's going to keep trying and trying and, and, check, and check the authentication, okay? And then we also have a web, uh, a web application, which is going to be the, the page we're going to try to get access to. And the web application is going to keep responding with failure, 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 until the brute force attack tool, which is going to be Hydra, finds a right combination of usernames and passwords, and then the web application will respond with a success. Okay, so that's how our brute force attack works. I'm going to show you guys the, all this in action, like with the tool. So I'm going to go back to Hydra. I mean, Kai Linux. I keep saying Hydra. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is the web application that we're gonna try to get access to. Uh, there's a bunch of these you can find. I'm gonna I'm using this one, which is on Hacker 101. I'm using this a challenge because this one has a login page, and it says try and find a way past the login page to get to the secret area. Okay, so let's try the web application. I'm gonna add random text. And then I'm gonna hit enter, I mean login. Okay, it says invalid username. That means we don't know the username. So the first thing we're gonna try to do is find the username. So let's go to Kali Linux and we're gonna be using Hydra. So let's see some of the commands in Hydra. Okay, so if you know the username or the login, you're gonna use a small, a lowercase l. But if you don't, we're gonna use a word list. So you put a capital, uh, uppercase L. And the same with the password. If you know it, you're going to use a lowercase p. And if you don't know it, you're going to use a list or a dictionary. So you're going to put a uppercase, a capital, uppercase p. Okay. Now we're going to write Hydra. We don't know. We don't know the the username. So we're going to add a capital uh, a capital p l. And we're going to be using this word list which is wordless.txt. And the password, we don't know the password, but we're gonna put one temporarily. So just write uh, any password, so it's gonna be test. Okay, so now that we wrote this and this, we have to write the IP address of the web application. 
So we're going to go back here and we're going to copy this part because this is the IP address for the, for the web application and we're going to paste it here. Okay, we just need the IP address, so I'm going to delete all this. Okay, after that, we're going to specify the request method. So there's mainly two request methods. It's either get or post. This web application uses post, so it's going to, so it's going to be HTTP post form. Okay, after that, we're going to tell Hydra where exactly to enter the username and password. So we're going to copy the rest of the path of the web application. So it's going to be this part. We're going to copy it. And we're going to paste it right here, OK? okay after that, we're going to we have to specif specify the field. So we, we want Hydra to enter the username here. And we want her to we want it to enter the password here. So we have to find the name of this field and the name of this field. So I'm going to inspect the username field. And the name of this field is username. It could be anything. That's why you have to check the, the name of the field. And the same with the password field. It's password. So we're going to tell Hydra in the username field to plug in the user. in the password field to plug in the pass. OK. After that, how does Hydra understand that it found the password or the username? In this case, the username. So when this message disappears, Hydra will know that it's found the username. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it here, OK? And that's about it. So now I'm going to hit enter. So usually this takes really, really long time, but I made it shorter for you guys. OK, so now I think, yes, we found the username, which is access, and the password is just temporary. We put a test temporary. So let's try the, let's try the username. Access, OK. And the password, we're going to put this. And then we're going to log in. And now it changed from invalid username to invalid password. That means the username is correct. So the next, the next step is to find the password. OK, so we're going to go right back here. We're going to write the same th things. But instead of invalid username, we're going to put invalid pass password. And we're also going to change the, the user. The username is going to be accessed, and, and we know it. That's why we're going to use a lowercase l. And we're going to put a list uh, for the password. So we're going to change this to a lowercase l and the uppercase l for the pass for the, because we want to put a word list. And we're going to erase this. I'm going to use the same IP address, the same request method, the same fields, OK? And then, ah, wait. OK, and then get enter. OK, so now we're going to wait. And now we have the password, which is computer. So I'm going to go and try on the web application. The username was access. The password was computer. And if I hit enter, OK, so now we have access to the secret area, but it doesn't have anything because this is just for practice. OK, so that's how to perform a brute force attack. So let's go. Let's go to the slides. <clears throat> so now we're going to see how to prevent a brute force attack. So how can you, as an individual, keep yourself safe? from brute force attacks. The first thing you're going to do is use a strong password. So you're going to make it very long and add uppercase letters, lowercase letters. You're going to add a number. And don't forget a special symbol. You're going to also change your password frequently. And you're going to avoid using the same password on multiple platforms, because 99.9% .9 if the hacker 
finds a password to one of your social media accounts, he's going to go try on your email and then he just has control over all your accounts. So that's why it's important to change or use different passwords on different platforms. The fourth thing you're going to do is enable multi-factor authentication. That's that's because even if the hacker has your password, he's going to need a second authentication process like a fingerprint or a pin that gets sent to your phone. Okay, so now let's move on to how long it takes to crack a password. So we're going to see how long it takes uh, one of the tools to crack your password. So if you if your password is eight characters long and only has lowercase letters, it's going to take the tool to get your password instantly, like very fast, faster than a blink of an eye. And it's the same if it's only 10 characters long. Uh, if it's 12 characters long, it's going to take 12, uh, I mean, several weeks. But it's it's not a long time like if the hacker is patient he will eventually find your password that's why you can add an upper, uppercase letter so if your password is eight characters long and contains an uppercase letter it's going to take half an hour one month if it's 10 characters five years if it's 12 characters and if you add a number it's going to be one hour if it's eight characters six years if it's 10 characters and 2000 years if it's 12 characters so this one this is just like a very long time, so it's going to be impossible for the person to find your, or the tool to find your password. Uh, also, if you add a symbol, it's going to take one day if it's eight characters, 50 years if it's 10 characters, and 63,000 years if it's 12 characters. As I said before, it's like almost impossible. So that's why you're going to use all of these things in your password uh, and keep your password strong. Okay, uh, so that's it for the workshop. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. Uh, thank you for listening. And do you have any questions?